Hello and welcome to this special show on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and here we talk about all aspects of India's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, world over, there are researchers and scientists who are working on finding ways to treat COVID-19 or find a vaccine for COVID-19 as well. And obviously, Indian researchers and scientists are also working on all these aspects. Recently, there has been a very positive development in terms of a plant-based drug being developed by Indian scientists. And clinical trials for this particular drug has also begun. Today in our show, we will talk about this particular drug and also how does it work as well as how plant-based drugs can be used not only in COVID pandemic, but also against other diseases as well. And for this, we have a distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Dr. Ram Vishwakarma, the director of CSIR's Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, IIIM, Jammu. We also have with us Mr. Dhanakar Salunke, the director of ICGEB, and Dr. Mohammad Aslam, the advisor in the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Welcome, all of you gentlemen, to Rajya Sabha Television. Let me begin with you, Dr. Vishwakarma, since your team has worked on this particular drug. If you could brief our viewers, what is a plant-based drug? Yeah, so this is a, a phytopharmaceutical drug, as far as regulatory definition goes. Uh, as you know, there, there are two kinds of drugs that we are very familiar. The small molecule, what we call NCE drugs, which we use routinely by oral route mostly. And then there are biologicals, monoclonal antibodies, enzymes, proteins. And this is the paradigm almost for the last 70 years globally. And 2005, US FDA created a new category of drug, the third category, which is they named botanical drug. After 10 years, Indian law was changed, and the third category was also created in India, which is called phytopharmaceutical drug. So ACQH is the first drug under the new regulatory system getting into clinical trial. So that's a historical moment. And the genesis of the drug starts actually from Department of Biotechnology. Department of Biotechnology almost 12, 13 years ago funded a project, joint project between International Center of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, whose director, Dr. Salunga, is here, and a company at that time. And this discovery was made by Dr. Naveen Khanna's group, where they discovered that this is potently active against certain viruses. And since then, you know, this work went on. And five or six years ago, we joined in the picture. And then we provided preclinical development support to this initiative of Department of Biotechnology, ICGB, and the Sun Pharma pharmaceutical company, which is getting into the clinical trial. So I think this is, to me, is a very unique relationship, any unique partnership, where frontline public institutions, government-funded institutions, and largest pharmaceutical company coming together and opening this new window of therapeutics in India. Let me bring in Dr. Dinaka Salunke as well. Dr. Salunke, what are your views on AQCH and what exactly is AQCH, the plant-based drug? I, I think that was pointed out very well by Dr. Vishwakarma. It is a, a phytopharmaceutical drug and uh, derived from a plant called Cocculus uh, Sutus, AQCH is an abbreviation associated with that. And uh, historically, as Dr. Vishwakarma pointed out very clearly, it was a project funded and uh, the initial funding was started uh, with very Dr. Aslam, who is here with us today. And uh, uh, with the earlier uh, incarnation of Sun Pharma, the Ranbaxi, which was actually subsequently merged with Sun Pharma and ICJB were funded to do this work and my colleague Naveen Khanna actually worked on it and it was being directed towards a solution for dengue virus and that has actually proved to be very useful and Naveen Khanna did extensive work to show that it effectively works on dengue virus uh, uh, and uh, that study leading to understand the mechanism of action of this form of uh, 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 the phytopharmaceutical actually indicated that it is possible for this drug also to be effective against uh, COVID-19. And that is how 
actually idea came in terms of trying it out against covid 19 okay uh, dr aslam uh, since uh, you were also involved let's let's hear from you uh, the genesis of uh, this uh, particular plant based drug so thank you mr daya it is really a proud moment for me personally as far as my, my department in fact i remember the day when we went to renbaxi research lab in gurgaon to have discussion with the research team to develop some joint project with icgb on developing some antiviral agents in 2007 and a lot of exercise we did at that time for developing a tripartite agreement also because at that time government was not having that kind of Uh, facilitation process or sops for working with industries so i remember those days uh, working with the ministry of law in in drafting those agreements and then the project was sanctioned as uh, dr vishwakarma and dr salunke has already mentioned and the screening of some more than 30 plants used in ayurveda was carried out to find out some antiviral agents the focus was at that time to find agents against dengue virus all the four strains of dengue virus at that time mm-hmm. and and a lot of ups and down we faced then research then uh, vaccine research laboratory was taken over by daichi sankyo of japan and then were again taken by sun pharma but dbt my department was continuously associated with this program and all the hurdles and all the blocks stumbling blocks you can say we try to remove during this long long journey that's why it is now a very very as i said a proud moment for me to be associated with this initiative and it is a historic moment as dr vishwakarma has said even okay. we have helped the company and icgb to to get to get the approval of uh, national biodiversity authority also the clearance of national biodiversity authority also and getting the permission to file a patent for coculus hirsutus because okay. the sun pharma company and icgb both are considered technically as international entities so there were some difficulties at that time and our secretary dr renu saru personally went to the secretary environment forest and climate change to have discussion on that issues and we removed all those hurdles finally okay okay let me bring in dr vishwakarma here so dr vishwakarma since uh, you know uh, this is uh, now an established fact that this is of course a very historical moment uh, as far as uh, the plant based drugs are concerned how will this aid or rather you know uh, put more weight in our fight against covid 19 and where are we in terms of assessing the benefits of this particular drug in terms of trials clinical trials yeah so i think uh, the work, work that was done on dengue virus as you know dengue virus is also positive rna virus and there are set of positive rna viruses although all those viruses enter the cell through different receptors but after they enter the cell and they go the process what we call endocytosis endosome lysosome fusion going to ribosome this journey of the virus is more or less common for these four five types of virus so that is how this hypothesis was built very quickly that can be repositioned and fortunately for us that we had already completed phase 1 safety trial on human which if that data was not available today we could have not been, we could have not been allowed to go to phase 2 so human safety phase 1 data was available to us and that is why very quickly we that put it together in the meantime while the regulatory document was evaluated we then used resources elsewhere to confirm the activity of this material for covid 19 uh, virus as well so i think the 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 lot of i would say fortunate circumstances contributed to this with, with where it has reached and it is okay. a important, important contribution i would say for the virus because most of the antiviral drugs that we have there are limitation in terms of some activity again mild moderate and i will see this will complement those drugs i am not saying that this would be a a kind of a, that it will deal with mild moderate severe 
but i am sure it is going to complement the existing therapeutic regime because the situation about vaccine is very uncertain although 120 vaccines are tried globally but i am not too sure about vaccine coming out because i gave you example last time that 40 year has passed since we have any sign of vaccine against hiv or other viruses so developing okay. vaccine against virus is not so easy but i am very confident that the few therapeutics which are coming in the market and if this material shows clinical uh, endpoints i think this will complement those therapies uh, small molecule therapies like remdesivir and favipiravir and other which are in the pipeline okay so this will this will complement the clinical therapies uh, against uh, covid 19 uh, dr salunke your views on how this uh, aqch would work or is expected to work uh, in uh, against covid 19 i think uh, i will just uh, complement uh, uh, the information that is provided by dr vishwakarma and uh, one one most important piece of information that actually uh, came uh, after the uh, drug controller of india gave approval for phase 2 clinical trials was in our sister laboratory in trieste italy Uh, antiviral assay in vitro antiviral assays were carried out and it shows clearly it the drug actually works so while all these uh, uh, months we were going by comparison with its effectiveness and mechanism of action where actually it works at early stage of replication and it clearly uh, 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 reduces the levels of pro inflammatory cytokines that was the basis why we thought if it works for dengue virus it should also work for covid 19 but mm-hmm. to our pleasant surprise we also got data to show that it actually works in vitro against the virus we, so that became a very very positive Uh, omen for actually going ahead with the clinical trials and i we should complement uh, uh, sun pharmaceutical team for actually getting all of us together not only uh, um, uh, many uh, institutions in india but also getting on board uh, our, our team at icgb in trieste in italy as well so mechanism most likely is early uh, replication stage the uh, pathways uh, as dr vishwakarma very nicely explained uh, the receptors for each one of them may be different but subsequent processes uh, are very similar and that replication stage uh, all of them seems to be common and that's where the uh, uh, the, uh, the drug must be working and it probably has possibilities of working against many other similar viruses okay okay wonderful uh, the, dr aslam in terms of timelines for this particular drug aqch the clinical trials are on from 5th of june onwards so in terms of timelines by uh, how much time or by when do we expect these trials to be over and perhaps you know a commercial production of this particular drug can begin actually the clinical trials have been conducted across 12 centers in india in 210 patient is the target and we are expecting the results to be available by october 2020 by that time we will able to get some results and analysis how it works and what are the really the efficacy in patients okay. of covid 19 and and then only uh, the commercial production of this particular yes. drug and is likely to begin there dr vishwakarma you know one important aspect here is the plant based drugs itself aqch of course is uh, really important in this present scenario but uh, having uh, you know come across or worked upon plant based drugs how would you look at this particular set of medicines uh, you know uh, in terms of fighting various diseases or combating other ailments as well because our fight uh, against diseases is not limited to covid-19 all of us know that yeah so is a is a very interesting perspective we are coming full circle historically i'll just give a little bit of philosophical background 
for last 5000 years human beings have been using plant based drugs in one form or other and we can see they still surviving in the form of various traditional system of medicine and if you go back 100 years ago majority of medicine used to be plant based drugs and in fact the drug discovery started exactly 200 years ago when somebody in germany isolated a compound called morphine from papaver somnifera and that was the fascination of physical scientists dominating the the scene at that time and they were not very happy with the crude mixtures and mixtures and all that say we need pure compounds and then came the biology and the receptor theory enzymes proteins and all that so there was a fascination of scientists to have a single protein single molecule and single disease and i think that that paradigm continues till today and i must mention you that the trajectory of this is very successful in science if you look at the orange book of us fda more than 50% of drugs are plant derived even today the first drug that you take for cancer is taxol that comes from a plant almost all antibiotic that you use they come from microbial sources so nature has been abundant source of drug the paradigm was to purify them and develop them a drug but then very quickly we realized that biology is much more complicated than our our wishful thinking that there are multiple etiology of a particular disease so that means you have to engage several point of the pathway through several molecules and i think we are coming full circle of our ancient wisdom and and then the problem of dealing with resistance and all that so it's actually we are going back to our own own roots and coming back again with a new tool to address the same issues again so i think it's not new but regulatory point of view it's certainly new and uh, started with fda in us and our indian regulator in 2015 so i think this will be a very important i must mention here the drugs which will be applied approved by this route will be able to be prescribed by modern doctors so okay, we have okay. a parallel parallel system called iu system those medicine are not not legally allowed to be prescribed by modern doctors that was the major hurdle now when drugs like acqh goes into market and gets approval from drug controller general of india every doctor will be able to prescribe them. okay and that's that's quite an uh, you know apt way of putting it through as uh, dr vishwakarma said that we've come full circle dr salunke your views on that aspect coming back full circle uh, you know uh, to plant based drugs see i think uh, very uh, relevant information we have gone by reductionist approach it so happens that dr vishwakarma and i both are physical scientists we have actually gone on to splitting identifying individual molecules and part of the molecule to identify where the active component it so happens that it is now realized that combination of molecules can have better effect this is what is called a supra supra molecular assembly so you can have effective drug which is a combination of molecules rather than individual molecules somewhere along the reductionist approach this separation of molecules the activity could be lost so it is the supra molecular combination that can be effective has now been accepted and this could be one of the most important examples of that type so it's the combination that might work but it is also possible and there are some hints with regard to that it is possible that we may actually find effective smaller fractions of this also to be effective so uh, that doesn't deny us the possibility that sometimes uh, combinations will work and that is why you don't try to go towards the end of having individual molecules always you should try to make sure that when you are fractionating molecules from plant source you should try and look at each stage where the highest activity is okay and that's 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 also an interesting aspect out there but dr aslam in terms of policies you know uh, if we are looking at this particular aspect that is plant based drugs uh, for uh, you know other diseases or other ailments as well a lot of work needs to be done here so from the department of biotechnology's uh, perspective or from the government of india's perspective in terms of policies which are in place there are we on the right path here to try and find new solutions or innovative solutions to the problems which we are facing definitely we are we have now a number of initiative in this direction mr dahia and in this dbt my department along with csir and icmr is trying to develop a pipeline of phytopharmaceutical drugs in the country 
because a lot of information is available lot of screening has been country in the country has been carried out on those plants used in our traditional system of medicine whether it is ayurveda unani or tibetan system a lot of information is available but no systematic effort is, has been made to convert that knowledge or resources into the drugs that is globally acceptable that can be done by generating scientific and technical data on their efficacy and safety aspects so a pipeline as i said of some seven or eight drugs we have already uh, taken steps and dr vishwakarma is is here heading this initiative jointly of dbt csir and icmr whether okay. it is so diabetes diabetes cancer pain children epilepsy is there and osteoarthritis is there so there are different disease segments in which initiatives have been already taken and work has already been started and maybe okay. in a couple of years we will be definitely at all together a different place okay that's that's so that's so you know uh, comforting to hear but as uh, you know dr aslam is pointing out systematic efforts need to be done everything has to be done in a holistic manner let's have concluding comments from dr vishwakarma here the man who is, is seems to be heading uh, all these integrated efforts here yeah so i think uh, this is a uh, this is a historic moment for regulatory system in india i'll go back you know uh, the drugs and cosmetic act was written by a, a very famous name sir ramnath chopra in 1942 and at that time when he wrote this act under the british india he had envisaged this at that time he was a modern doctor of pharmacology but his heart was in traditional system of medicine and he had envisaged in that document that time will come when the modern tools of physics and medicine and surgery will use the concept of traditional system of medicine and then rationalize the 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 the, the thought process of the people for thousands of years using natural resources for survival on this earth where all the viruses all the bacteria all the diseases have been existing None, nothing is new all these corona viruses must have been existing for thousands of years and all these parasitic infections and people is still survive using these resources and i think this is a very phenomenal evolutionary example where the plant life is offering these ligands of the protein which are the animal biology i think this is a new paradigm in biology altogether where the ligands are in the one compartment of the living system receptors are in another compartment system this is a very fascinating story actually that is evolving scientifically which we call network pharmacology where natural products from sources can be used to engage multiple targets of the human physiology and because of the high content screening and those new advances in biology and structural biology particularly now we can use computational tools pharmacological tools to figure out what is actually happening in these kind of interaction it is very very okay. interesting scientifically and regulatory point of view both okay. okay that's that's quite interesting dr salunke your concluding views on what needs to be done from here onwards to ensure the success of all these efforts which all uh, you uh, scientists are working on before i say what should be done i would also want to emphasize that the initiation of the clinical trials of aqch for covid-19 is a beautiful example of government departments partnering with publicly funded institutions it's a very good example of national laboratories and international institution collaboration and further it is a fantastic combination of public private partnership so it's a combination and permutations of all possible collaborations this example is a fantastic example uh, the, 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 the solution and uh, if we actually go this way in future and i think uh, we have a able uh, uh, government and we have fantastic science departments we will go long way in not only solving the covid 19 problem but in solving many other health related issues that our country faces we have kept it aside at this point of time but we have many more problems to be solved let us first solve the covid 19 problem okay 
Thank you so much, Dr. Salumke, Dr. Vishwakarma, and Dr. Aslam there for sharing your views with us on this particular important aspect. So as our panelists are pointing out, the entire journey of AQCH, the plant-based drug against COVID-19, is a wonderful example of how all the stakeholders, if working together, can find out innovative solutions to all the problems which we are facing. And plant-based drugs, seemingly, is the new frontier which needs to be worked over and won over as well. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television. Keep yourself safe. Follow all the guidelines specifically with respect to social distancing. And don't forget to wear a mask when you step out of your house. Thank you.